The last passing game weapon I wanted to bring up, because you've mentioned two tight end sets. I know this guy was getting tons of buzz in OTAs, and that's Noah Gray, the rookie mm-hmm. tight end, another big body who was making daily plays in OTAs. Now, has that carried over into camp when the pads have come on? Has he still looked great? Uh, what are your thoughts on this rookie tight end? How's he looking? So everybody uh, here in Kansas City has started to, to, to understand my affection for Noah Gray. <laughs> uh, and so... I'll be really quick with this. The Chiefs, you know, you know, I didn't really know Noah Gray on draft day. He was one of those prospects where some team always takes him and you go, wait, wait, he's not on my sheet. Like, what, what are we like? I didn't really, you know, I, I, I've said I've advocated for years that the Chiefs should get another tight end to pair with Travis Kelsey. It makes all the sense in the world. We really don't need to get into it. So the Chiefs this year trade up in the fifth round. They draft Noah Gray from Duke. And the reason I think Noah kind of went under the radar is um, Duke's quarterback play was not good last season, (laughs) but Noah Gray was. And one of the scouts for the Chiefs explained to me, hey, even when we scouted him, and even though he may not have been on your radar as one of these mid-round tight ends to choose from, he was getting open. He was someone who could understand the system. They moved him around both in the slot to the H back, to the fullback, to the tight end. The guy is very smart. He's very cerebral. When the pads came on in training camp, I was I was hopeful, and Noah Gray has done a valuable, admirable job of really continuing to impress the Chiefs. You hope in the middle of the season. I'm not saying Noah Gray is going to be out there, you know, killing it in September, but I think the hope is you bring him along slowly. He starts to make some real waves in November, perhaps into December. And when I went back and watched Noah Gray on film in college and then matched what my eyes were seeing in OTAs, I started calling Noah Gray a majestic white horse on a sandy beach. And I hope (laughs) that remains true through the regular season, because sometimes when you get to later round draft picks, they are that majestic white horse. And then reality sets in and they become mostly average horses and or donkeys. So I want Noah Gray to continue to be that white horse. Um, he's been excellent. He has had some really good reps against Daniel Sorensen, who was a starting safety for the Kansas City Chiefs. And I think there's a chance for Noah Gray to some to surprise some people um, if the matchups are favorable for him and he continues to progress at a fast pace to what the Chiefs have scouted and what the coaches have seen so far uh, in training camp. The preseason, I want to see it. I I want to see Noah Gray dominate in the second half of these preseason games because Chad Henney is a reliable backup quarterback to where I think you can get some really good evaluations on these second tier skill position guys, but I love Noah Gray. He has my affection. Um, I think he has a chance to be a legitimate player in this offense to where these two tight end sets become a little bit more complicated because maybe the Chiefs can run out of it and pass out of it. And again, the Chiefs don't need to be more unpredictable, but that's where they're trending if everything goes a certain way with these younger players. Really intriguing for sure, uh, an athletic tight end like that. Now, if anything, in, in football, there's very rarely a, a tight end handcuff. We call it in fantasy a handcuff for like the backup running back. If your running back goes down, <laughs> you know yep. the, the you know you have his backup ready. Could that be the case with Travis Kelsey though? Like, if anything, I know you said he's played 16 games in all these seasons. He hasn't missed one. And forever, but let's say tragedy does fall and something unfortunately happens. I hope it doesn't. I'm not saying I want it to, but let's right. say it does. Would Noah Gray be that next man up? And, and do you think he could shoulder a Travis Kelsey style role, or would that just be way too far fetched? I think they would have to change some things, but I would say because he's a rookie, because I've seen the talent, just go put him out there and just yeah. see what you can get. Um, whether he's split in on the slot, whether he's traditional from that tight end standpoint. Um, You know, it's fascinating. I don't want to give away too much here, but my brain relatively works from time to time. (laughs) And I can see a lot of, I can see a lot of things that the Chiefs did in 2018 that should work with Noah Gray if these opportunities increase or his snaps uh, had to go up a certain a bit um, where they used to run these read option plays in 2018 with, um, with Kareem Hunt. And Kareem Hunt is an incredible running back. Obviously, he's with the Cleveland Browns now. He's obviously maintained his success. But it was a real bind for defenses because Mahomes would stick the ball out in front of 
you know, Kareem Hunt and the defense would have to commit and who was coming behind every linebacker. Well, it was Travis Kelsey, uh, mostly from that short slot position, uh, whether he was going to where the ball was or he was running the opposite opposite of the, of the strong side formation. I think Noah Gray could do some of those type of things where, hey, maybe you use read option to get him some one-on-one opportunities. Uh, maybe there's chances for him to split wide and sort of come underneath on crossing routes. I I I get the sense that the Chiefs scouted Noah Gray and understood that maybe some teams undervalued what he could do in their maybe more pro-style offense, where Reed is a pro-style college concept sort of fusion. So where maybe that helps Noah Gray's progress a little bit more. Um, I think Blake Bell is getting older. Um, he's not the player he was in 2019, at least so far in camp. Uh, he will be there for blocking. He's one of the best blocking tight ends, but you're not going to get much fantasy production out of him. So the logical person to get wide receiver targets to help out um, in sort of keeping linebackers on the field should be Noah Gray. And then it's a matter of can he win his one-on-one matchups? Does Mahomes find a way to get him the ball uh, with some space in the middle of the field? Because the talent's there. But again, we've never seen it in an NFL context. So there's always a little bit of a a hesitation. But this is the first time since the team knew they had a star in Travis Kelsey where they have someone capable of getting pretty high in terms of what their talent, what their repertoire is that matches the offense. Uh, I know some Chiefs fans who may be listening think of Demetrius Harris and sort of the love affair, love-hate relationship they had with him because there'd be times where Demetrius showed, hey, this this guy has some real skills to him, and there'd be times where he, you know, the consistency was the issue, particularly when you know you're you're getting plays against Travis Kelsey. There's some hesitancy there, but maybe Noah Gray is an even better version of what Demetrius Harris was in 2017 and 2018. Very intriguing indeed. Well, what is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already. Share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.